So starting batch 625. Um, I haven't done very many batches this year. I've been going pretty slow trying to catch up on a few other things and I really should be doing more other things. Today we're doing some mushrooms. So Chef Store had mushrooms on sale, uh, $6.99, so $7 for two and a half pounds of pre-sliced mushrooms. Um, because mushrooms are so light, I won't be able to get 10 pounds in the batch because it just won't fit in there. So you might be able to stuff them in there, but I'm not even going to try. So I'm going to try to get just the five pounds in there. The freeze dryer's already been pre-cooling for almost an hour and a half, and it really didn't need to be pre-cooled at all for this batch because I'm doing mushrooms this time, and they're not going to be pre-frozen. So we just got them from Chef Store. Going to put them right on the trays. So let's go over and get them in there. So these are the mushrooms I'm using today. We got these at Chef Store a few hours ago, and I'm going to get them right in there. And you can see that's a big amount of mushrooms. The package is about the same width as this tray, and it's about four inches thick. It's going to really fill up the tray. I'm going to go ahead and put two of the trays next to each other at a time. Actually, I can probably Maybe I can get all four of them out here, because I can weigh them afterwards. So by putting them all out at the same time, then if mushrooms spill off of one tray, it'll already be on the next tray. That's a lot of mushrooms, and some of them are pretty big. Well, as long as I can get them into the shelf space, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to fill it up and then we can always kind of stir them around because I'm not really worried about the size too much because my thought is that they could be powdered or chopped and used in soups and gravies and all kinds of things after they've been freeze dried. They're tall, but it's going to fit. And then I'll check the weight and kind of even them out a little bit if they're not very even. So let's get the other one. Okay. Yeah, well, let's give it a quick check for weight and see how close they are. Okay, that's 1306. That's 1344. They're not that far off. I'm going to put a couple more on this one. Okay, that's going to be close enough. And we'll do a quick check on this. And then I'll get final weights. 1317. Okay, 1319. So these are all very even. Now we'll get our weights on them. And this is tray one through four. Tray 1 is 1317, oh, I don't know where that one belongs. I'll put it on here. So 1333, 1317, and 1319. Okay, now I am going to add thermometers in these because I want to know the temperatures before I take them out. So I'm not going to really worry about stabbing the individual piece of food because these are thin slices. And these are pretty nice slices. I was worried about them being very thick, but these aren't too bad. Now we'll get these moved over to the freeze dryer and get them in. So again, this really didn't need to be pre-cooled for this to work uh, this time because these aren't frozen. But I'm so used to it, I did. And now it's um, 21 below. The chamber itself is about 40 below. So we'll put these in there real quick. And there's not a huge load. This is only a five pound load this time. But they are light and fluffy and will kind of work as insulation. And so it still may take a decent long time. Okay, got a good seal ring all the way around there. It's ready to go. Uh, probably doesn't need the rest of the four and a quarter hours for pre-freeze, but it might. And with the thermometers in the uh, mushrooms, I'll be able to tell. 
and your machine may be considerably different if you have the new software. This is old software or firmware from 2017 and I really like it. Uh, my sister's from 2022, late 2022, works just fine, but I actually like mine better and the way it functions. Anyway, we'll come back and see this in a day or two because, again, there's not a huge water load here, but it still has a insulation quality of the mushrooms because it's about that thick on the trays. The stuff in between doesn't get direct heat from the tray or from the heater, um, the heater pad above so it could take longer to freeze dry we'll watch it and come back when it's done so we'll see you then the mushrooms have been in there for about two full days just over 48 hours however the actual freeze drying time is way less than that because they've been waiting for me since last night and now it's in the afternoon so the actual drying time right now is only about 31 hours about 17 and a quarter hours less than it shows so we'll get them out check them and then put them back in there and i have a little post-it note to remind myself how long it's actually used time so we'll bypass the rest of the time using the down arrow okay and you can hit the clock to jump forward on this older version but i don't like to do that because i've messed up before and double clicked it and gone clear out so we'll open the drain valve. We'll get that open. So tray one. And very light now, 808 grams. Tray two, 802. And now we're going to switch the location of these two. Going to put tray two up on the top and tray one down. These center two spots tend to be slightly warmer than these outside two, with the bottom one usually the lowest. Okay, 797, and tray four, 803. All right, we'll put them back up. We'll put tray four up one, tray three down one, and get that resealed. So I've got the drain valve closed and we'll get it restarted. I'm going to just add more dry time. And it says, it reminds you to close the drain valve. Already did it. Continue. And on my older model, it has a cooling cycle of an hour for the vacuum pump. Uh, the older vacuum pump kind of needed it, but I have a fan blowing on it to keep it cool. So it's really not a concern. So I can hit the clock now to jump past that time and get it restarted. And because I know that I'm not going to be here for a couple hours, I'm going to bump this up to four hours. So I bumped it up to four hours, but I can lower it later if I find that that's more time than I need. For anybody new to the channel, this is what I call my dry check. So I've weighed it carefully with a fairly accurate scale after I think it's already dry. And then I put it back in for a minimum of two more hours. And I like to do a minimum of two hours because it's going to take part of that two hours to get the vacuum back down and the temperature back up so it can start driving off any more moisture if there is any. Three or four hours is fine or any amount more than two. If it doesn't lose any weight during these next two or four hours in this case, then I know it's already dry right now. I have no good way to tell if it's dry right now. I can only tell if it was dry two hours ago or four hours ago by having no weight drop. There's no real good positive method to tell if the entire five or 10 pounds is dry at this moment. There are good meters that start at $1,000 to $6,000 that can tell you a small sample is dry but it doesn't do the whole tray. And none of the other moisture meters are made for this. A lumber moisture meter is not made for checking food. And it's not calibrated the same. And all it's doing is basically using resistance uh, between the two probes. And so if it's dried exactly between those two probes, it thinks it's dry. Well, it doesn't check anything around it. 
and it's not calibrated for this various foods. So it's easily fooled. And so the scale is less easily fooled because it's either losing weight or it's not. Okay, so we'll be back in a few hours on this. So don't go away, it'll be just a second. I'm back. Turns out it's a good thing that I gave it four more hours uh, when I did because now it's four hours later. So we'll get them out, check them to see if they were already dry four hours ago. That's what this check is about. We're checking to see if it lost any weight. If it didn't lose any weight during these four hours, it was already dry four hours ago, but we couldn't know. Now, if it did lose weight, we'll put them back in for at least another two hours. I think we've gone as much as five additional cycles before, before we were finally satisfied that it had stopped losing weight. And usually that's with things that are like light and fluffy. So if we've got a big batch of something that's light and fluffy and acts as insulation, uh, like egg whites perhaps, maybe a few other things. So usually a light colored, very light fluffy food uh, is the most likely that we've seen to have that happen. Anyway, we'll bypass the rest of the time. Open the drain valve. And as soon as the pressure is equalized, we'll be able to open it. When it's under vacuum, it has over a thousand pounds pressure pushing in on that. Yeah. Oh, starting with tray one. Okay, no change. Tray two, no change. And no change. Okay, and no change. So we'll stop the machine. So we'll go ahead and stop that with no defrost. The fact that none of them had any change means that they were dry four hours ago. So we can use that time for our, how long did it take to dry? We'll get these moved over to the bagging area and get ready to bag those. We'll come back and get the freeze drying time and the power usage for this batch. And we have to recognize that it has extra time. So it's showing almost 52 and a half hours. However, we know that actually it was 28 hours last night plus I gave it three additional hours last night three additional hours to rewarm it this morning before the dry check and so 34 hours is about how long that batch actually took so there was a lot of extra hours that was waiting and now we'll get the my little defrost baffle into place and that just is to help direct the air in from the fan. So that batch took 28.34 kilowatt hours and would have had and would have been considerably less if I'd been there to take it out on time. Okay, we'll get the thermometers out and then get them weighed. They don't weigh a lot now. Okay, so tray one without the thermometer, 800 even. 794. 789. And 795. I'm bagging them with a half pound in each. So I have my bags pre-labeled with the batch number and I have it on the label also. I wrote it on with felt pin here. That way I don't have to worry about it falling off. And then I've got a paper label taped on and what it is, the date that it went into the freeze dryer and the amount that it was before drying, which was eight ounces. So I'm gonna put a half pound in each one. And then I'll also add how much water was removed. Uh, which I meant to do before I opened all the bags. Uh, now it's a little bit harder to write on them, but we'll make it work. So and we'll find out how much these weigh now. It was five pounds. We'll be back in just a second. So this started out as 22.95 grams, about five pounds. It's now 187 grams. So it had a total water loss of about 2,108 grams. So now to get it back, 
each half pound. So I did just since there's five pounds, I just simply divided these by 10 to get half pounds. So this needs 210.8 grams of water. So I'll just put 210 on the bag because it's close enough. And each bag needs to have about 18.7 grams of mushrooms to equal that half pound. So let's get them bagged. These bags weigh about 18 and a half grams. The mushrooms that are going to go in for a half pound is 18.7 grams. So it's about the same as the empty bag. That's interesting. And it will be about uh, two fifths of a pan. Shake those down a bit so that they fit. And of course you could crush or powder these if that's what you're after. And they could have been cut smaller before it started. But I really wanted this size because I don't know what I'm going to use them for later. These would be great to just rehydrate and saute. In fact, we should do a bag of these. I'd mentioned on another video the fact that the food snaps is not necessarily a good indicator of dry because some foods like shrimp for instance don't really snap now mushroom slices bigger slices they'll kind of snap i can probably get this close to a microphone so they'll they will kind of snap but they also are not terribly crisp if you snap them fast they'll do fine so you can mush it, you can kind of push it and just mush it flat as opposed to powdering it. Some things will powder if you squish them. Mushroom is more like a styrofoam piece and it really will just squish. It will break apart and as you heard it'll even snap but it really doesn't have a powdering kind of structure unless you were to use like a food processor or blender. So you couldn't really use the rolling pin like I do on some things for powdering these. Now I'm going to add 300 cc oxygen absorbers to each of these and then get them ready for heat sealing. And you can see the little indicator right here. It's kind of a salmon color. And if I cut the top off and as soon as I open it and let any air in, it will turn color quite quickly. You can see just a few seconds and it's a blue color. It will also turn back to the other color if you put it in a bag with no oxygen. So if I put it in another bag with oxygen absorbers that will turn back to the salmon or pink color. Okay. I'm going to tuck these down the sides to make sure that they don't end up in the zipper. And I'm moving each bag to the side so that I make sure that I get each bag. I don't forget one or double up on one. And then I'm going to I'll zipper each one of them shut. They're pretty full so it's going to be tough to just squish them. So on these I'll grab the two sides and kind of start closing them from the sides and pull apart and that will push the seal together. And then I can just zipper it shut. And as I've said before, it's a good zipper, but if you put this underwater on a lot of the bags and squish, you will get air bubbles out. So it's not a good seal. So we will, of course, heat seal these. But first, I want to get them closed quickly. And when I'm doing these on video, I bring my heat sealer over here. Otherwise, it sits on the edge of the uh, table against a stop so that it can't fall off the edge. I almost missed so I'm going to go do this one again. I've got it at an angle and it only has about you know, four millimeters of the five millimeter wide strip there. And yours may have a eight millimeter wide strip anyway. But I want to get at least a five millimeter wide seal across there. Okay now it's got a good seal. I don't need to lift that. It's got a good seal. I've got it up high so I've got room for additional seals before it gets to the zipper in case I do a bad job uh, or if I want to cut it off and use some I've got room for resealing it. 
but if it has a bad seal then I'm going to add another seal below this right now. Then I let it cool for a few seconds before I release it just to make sure that it gets re-solidified. And finally, as usual, before I store them on the racks, I'm going to put a gross weight on each bag. So this bag weighs 45 grams the way it is right now. And I could use a more sensitive scale and maybe on these light things I should. So this weighs 45 grams and if it bounces between two numbers, I'll take the higher number. If the weight of this bag starts to get heavier, that means something's getting inside. It can't be just something bad that I bagged to begin with. It has to be getting inside to get heavier. That means I've got a bad bag. Either the bags were bad, or I've punctured it, or I didn't seal it well, but in some way moisture's getting in. Okay, as soon as I've got these all labeled, we'll put these on racks. Those are all ready for storage. One thing that I don't mention near enough is to test your sealer. So I'm going to cut a strip of this material. This is one of the heavy Mylar bags. Okay, so we've got two strips of it. And we'll leave them the insides together side and we'll just put it on the sealer let it cool for a few seconds and then check the seal because it should seal very well each time if it doesn't you can see none of that came apart it's very tight so check your sealer on a regular basis and if you don't damage this too much your next test can just be a little higher up on that so you could use a, a test piece like this a number of times but we check our sealer on a regular basis to make sure it is in fact still sealing because that's important not just to go through the motions or to put that um, that little waffle print on there, it needs to be sealing. So check it once in a while. So that's it until the next one. As I mentioned, we're going to do a quick little test of rehydrating a bag of these mushrooms, or at least part of the bag. So I wish I'd have thought about this a couple of days ago when we made some mushroom beef gravy to go over some hamburger patties, but I forgot. So I'm going to rehydrate these using some canned beef broth and then saute them a bit just for snacking on. Okay. And because I had sealed it so high, we could cut this off and then have room to reseal it. But instead I just ripped it off. Okay. And I don't know if all these will fit in here, so... We'll find out. They will after they get rehydrated a bit, so even if it's a tight fit, it'll be fine. Oh, they fit fine. And since I'm going to just drain them and saute them, I don't need to worry about how much moisture I give them because I'll just use that in the pan afterwards. So, I'll just kind of top it off. If I were putting them into some kind of soup or something where I needed to get that hydration level correct, then I would add the 210 grams like it says. But with this, it's not going to matter. As long as I have a, a, enough of it. And that should be plenty right there. Because I'll just get them below the surface there and then let them sit for a few minutes. It shouldn't take long. Mushrooms usually rehydrate very quickly. 
but these were a fairly decent thickness so it might take a, a few minutes okay so we'll come back to those in a few minutes at the stove got some butter heated here and the mushrooms have been soaking in there for just a little over 15 minutes and of course you could have chopped these uh, if that's what you want for size and shape you could even powder them to put them into uh, soups or or sauces but I just left them as the slices they were I'm going to just get them out of here and into the pan and of course I could add some thickener to this and we could make it into a little bit of a sauce which I think I'll probably do bottom line is basically you could use them for anything that you are going to cook anyway with mushrooms and they'll come out quite nicely all right that's good so I took the rest of that beef broth and added a bit of cornstarch to it so we could thicken it up a little bit this would be good over mashed potatoes There we go. So done. Ready to use over anything or just a snack on this way. And I'd added a bit of salt and pepper to the beef broth to season it up. And of course you could add whatever seasoning you want. Ah, that's good. So this will work fine with anything that you're going to use mushrooms for anyway, as long as you were planning on cooking them. If you want them raw in a salad, I would say don't rehydrate them at all just leave them dry and put them in just the same way I would do um, tomato slices I wouldn't rehydrate them before I use them unless I'm gonna make a sauce out of them okay that's it for that one as I mentioned I was going to do a quick test with some rehydrating some of the mushrooms from batch 625 well I guess that's this batch if we put it in that video uh,